Hello, welcome to Fire Friday. Uh, better late than never. I almost forgot about it. Since, um, since getting back to work after being sick and missing three weeks of work, I've been getting a bunch of overtime and trying to make up for some lost time. And then doing this 22 a day push-up challenge, it uh, almost forgot to do a Fire Friday. So this Fire Friday, I got a bunch of stuff I'm gonna talk about, and then we're gonna get a uh, vintage torch, blow torch lit. So let me get the camera turned around and zoomed in, and we'll go over a few things, and we'll get this Fire Friday going. Here we go. Okay, so back on the subject of torches, um, I wanted to show and talk about, um, I don't know if I want to call it a negative, but uh, basically just share it with you. Um, there is a danger level when you have a liquid flammable, uh, flammable liquid in a vessel that's pressurized uh, around open flame. And this torch here is a good example of something to look forward to. And I'm going to guess by the way it happened, a consequence. So you can see there's a lot of solder on here where someone's made some repairs. Um, and looks like we had a repair here on the tank. You can see a solder uh, joint there. And if you look all around this tank, it's on this side here. There's two or three vertical cracks and you can feel where it's pushed out. And I'm guessing that's what cracked it. Now see, I'll point them out here. There's one right here you can see in the light and you can actually feel it. You can feel it's like square and you can feel the crack. And then there's another one. You can actually see it's got like a facet to it. It's right here. And there's, there's some other lines in here. You can see where I guess gas has ran down and lit at some point. I'm gonna guess under pressure it was probably leaking out of here. Um, this was obviously a crack that someone repaired. So this guy here is a good candidate for a cleanup and a light conversion or for parts. Uh, I got it pretty cheap and I think that's what I intended on using, using it for was parts. So that's kind of a, a negative and one of the things to look forward for in, you know, purchasing these. Um, so, and it has a lot of good hardware on it. A lot of times these, these uh, hooks for the, for the soldering iron are missing or broke. Um, the screws and so forth, the primer cup, the uh, pump, that's the same pump that's on my big one that I keep on top of my bench out here. The valve may be different because this head is a little smaller. This is a smaller one. I'll show you the, the full size. see them you can see them together um, this one is considerably smaller the tank is shorter the tank is a lot smaller diameter and the burner head is considerably shorter I can barely put my pinky in there and this one I could probably put my thumb in so but it actually looks like the valves may be interchangeable uh, if need be so but the pump is the same uh, both of these are auto burns. I, I'm going to venture that this guy here is what this one would have looked like originally back in the day because there was a silhouette of where a handle was uh, epoxied on or something like that. And I'm going to guess that that's what this guy looked like. So, and then I am a member of the Blowtorch Collectors Association, and they have two publications out. This one here is, is one. Um, it's a pretty, pretty exhaustive book, uh, but yet it, it is not all-inclusive. And I'll just show you some snippets of what's in the book. It helps you identify, it, if anything at least, it helps you identify blowtorches, and it shows you what the maker's mark or cartouche or whatever would look like 
uh, how to identify them because a lot of these had a sticker or um, some type of something that has worn off over time. Uh, this old one here is, is embossed on the tank. Um, lots of different models. It is in alphabetical order. Here's another one. So uh, this is put out by members, the founding members of the BTCA. Uh, this book here, I think, is the second book. I can't remember. There's two of them. Um, this one was about $25. The other one I haven't gotten yet because it's, it's like 50 bucks. So I just haven't gotten around to picking it up. But um, I'll show. I was going to bring. I'm a member, and you get a little patch. It's one-time membership fee of nine dollars. It's pretty cool. They have a website. Um, check them out if you're interested. And uh, you know, if anything, it'll help you in 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 just uh, collecting or identifying something you may have. So the next one up, <clears throat> this one here was. Um, I got an army surplus. It's old military surplus. It's Swedish. Uh, it's really, really nice shape. It's pretty heavy. It feels like it must be pretty well made. Big stout handles on here. Um, so I'm guessing this one must have been specialized for some type of, I'm not, I'm going to say maybe stripping paint or, you know, something along them lines. Um, so we have our, I'm going to say this is the fill, but it also has another one on the bottom like the rest of them. So maybe this is the fill because on the rest of them, this is kind of like the funnel and you fill here. Um, maybe this is like a pressure relief to let the air out when you're done using it. And then you have your pump and your pump right here. And it, it feels like it, it really wants to build pressure. It feels like the seal's in really good shape. So this one is, again, it's made in Sweden and it is a Optimus and I don't really have much other information on it than that. So uh, you can tell it's a small one. Here's, here's the other little guy next to it. I'm gonna say that's about a pint. It's almost it's actually pretty comparable to this one. This, the heads on these, these are solid copper. And um, so this one here is much, much smaller. There's not, a, it, this one's solid brass. There's not a whole lot to the burner head on this one. Uh, whereas this one here, there's a lot of material there. It's pretty heavy. Uh, this one's American made. This one is an auto burns. And like I talked in the previous videos, this is the predecessor to the burns matic torch that is currently on the market that we get in the uh, map gas or uh, propane. So, yeah, I don't have a whole lot of information in my, my, uh, my book here. I haven't found, uh, I found the Optimus, but I actually haven't found this one particular. Um, I'm pretty sure it burns either, I don't think it's an alcohol burning one, and I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's not kerosene because the kerosene ones usually have a tube that wraps around that preheats the fuel before it goes back into the nozzle to come out through the, um, uh, well, the nozzle of the, the torch itself because they got to heat that kerosene up good and hot before it'll, to get a good burn on it. Whereas the gas or the alcohol doesn't require much for preheat. Um, being as how this has the big, the bowl here, I'm going to say this is probably a uh, gasoline blow torch. So, let me, uh, let, me, let me get some things squared away here and we'll get this guy filled up and, and get him lit. Real quick, I wanted to go over and add to, uh, before lighting one of these, if anybody ventures to do so, um, to save, given we were just talking about this thing and where obviously it's had some type of uh, flashback or some type of issue happened in here. It, it could have been as simple as somebody just overpressured it with the hand pump. Um, so before anybody ventures into lighting a torch that they don't know anything about, you want to check it. Once you know you verify the valve works and everything and the pump works and you make it pump, your seals are good, blah, blah, blah. You want to take just like you would check uh, a tire or a tube for a leak, a little bit of water with some soap mixed in it, and 
build up your pressure. This one does have pressure because I cracked a valve, I can hear it leaking out. I'm gonna build up a little bit more pressure. And then I'm gonna go around and give it a little spray and just check everything and make sure we don't have at all the different places where it threads and looks like a joint or something like that. And check and look for big build up of foam where something's leaking. Okay. We have just soapy bubbles, but no big plumage where it's growing foam. You notice I have a little bit right here. See them fine bubbles and it just keeps growing here. Wipe it away and it's gonna come right back. There it goes, it's coming back. So let me just tighten that guy up. All right, we're still getting a little bit, so I'll have to check the seal on that and address that. Let's check the one underneath. This one isn't so bad because it couldn't be any further away from the flame. And this guy's way good too. So, all that done, as we do, got to put some gas in it. We got to light it so it warms it up. Let's get him all wiped off. Put this mess away, get some gas in this guy. I'm going to take care of that real quick and then we'll light it.